Shalom. Welcome back to Issachar Forum, a prophetic think tank. This is Les Lawrence, and I'm glad you're with me. Um, let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll begin. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness in the restoration of Israel, and we stand with Israel, and particularly with your plan and your purpose. In the name of your Son, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, and Yeshua Ben Yehovah, Jesus, the Son of God. Amen. Well, I'm glad to have you with us. There's uh, the major event, of course, right now in Israel has been the death of Ariel Sharon, the former prime minister who is uh, lionized and revered by some and hated by others, uh, particularly, of course, the Palestinians, but even in the Israeli left in some uh, different parts of Israeli society, they didn't like him for various reasons. But he certainly was a, a dominant figure for a couple decades in Israel through the six. Uh, Six-Day War in 1967 and, and the 73 War, and of course, most recently, uh, eight years ago, when he oversaw the withdrawal from Gaza. And uh, I've been writing about that on my blog this week. I wrote a couple blogs before he passed, uh, which I refer you to, uh, because in one of them I pointed out what, what I felt like was his worst mistake, and that was when he fell into judgment after dividing the land. Joel 3 says uh, that God will judge the nations for dividing his land and that uh, that uh, my point was that even the prime minister of Israel is not exempt from the judgments of God if he goes against the, the wills will of God uh, however I then finished uh, the week uh, yesterday after the news of his death with a posting uh, talking about the attitude we need to have as believers uh, toward the leaders that God has chosen for Israel or for any nation for that matter all the rulers ordained of God and uh, as David said, he would not touch God's anointed. Uh, we need to have a certain respect. Uh, even though there were mistakes, uh, we still need to respect. And I pray for Errol Sharon's uh, mercy on his eternal soul. Well, um, I also want to just mention uh, where you can find my blog in case you haven't found it yet. It's at www.elishavision.wordpress.com. There is one uh, reference I want to make today. Uh, in today's Israel National News, uh, Arut Sheva, there's an article that says Iron Dome, uh, that's a defense, missile defense system, uh, to guard the Sharon burial from Gaza rockets. And the secondary headline says uh, the tight security for Errol Sharon's Negev funeral shows what a, quote, success, unquote, the disengagement was, said uh, Minister of Knesset Moti Yogev. Uh, the irony of that is that uh, since uh, Sharon's ranch is down uh, near Gaza, they actually have to protect his ranch from rockets being fired into Gaza during the funeral uh, with the Iron Dome defense system, uh, which never would have been necessary before he withdrew the Jewish people from Gaza. And so it's irony even in his death. Well, uh, there's a lot of other stuff going on in the world. I want to uh, try to get through quite a bit today, and yet I'll, I'm going to try to shorten my videos just a few minutes uh, to make it a little easier for, for you to uh, watch them and, and get through them yourself. Um, the other big thing going on this week is the nuclear talks uh, over Iran, and uh, they, resumed, they resumed Thursday uh, in Geneva, and of course it's reported all, all over the news. Uh, there's a report on Yahoo!, uh, dot com and uh, also uh, on the blaze in fact the blaze uh, reporting uh, today uh, says that Iran and the six world powers agree to a nuclear deal and then a subheadline there is Obama threatens to veto any legislation enacting new sanctions on Islamic Republic that's interesting both of those points are interesting when it says they agree to a nuclear deal uh, the, the truth behind that headline is actually the deal that they had agreed to several months ago, I think it was in November, uh, has not been implemented yet. And what they have agreed, this big agreement this week on Thursday, was simply that they would now, uh, they would now start the clock ticking. Actually, not now, but on January 20th, uh, another uh, week from now or so. So uh, it's really not a big agreement. But so the news it has to do with the uh, idea that Obama threatens to veto. Uh, what the Senate is doing, and uh, the interesting thing about that is that the Senate now has 77 votes, which is a veto-proof uh, majority, 
that they can pass that uh, increased sanctions uh, and even override a veto. And of course, Obama's basically saying even if they pass it, he will veto it and make them have to vote again and to override the veto. And yet there's also some minor uh, behind the scenes things like the, the new sanctions wouldn't start until the six months is up if Iran is proven to have uh, violated it in some way, which they're already uh, doing it. Uh, in fact, there's a report on Debcofile um, Friday that says Iran blatantly defies five key Geneva Pact commitments uh, and heads for a nuclear arsenal. Um, they're already uh, making more centrifuges, the, the more advanced ones, and they've announced that they're making a third generation, even faster centrifuge, and that they believe it, they're free to do that and so forth. And uh, so the, most of us uh, who've been watching the whole Middle East situation understand that Iran simply is buying time. They don't have any intention of stocking, stopping the program to develop nuclear weapons. They're moving on in that direction. Um, so the good news is, uh, from our point of view, that, that uh, there is a veto-proof majority of senators who support the sanctions. And we need to continue to pray that uh, people uh, in the Senate will, will uphold God's plan for Israel and and not allow the president to, uh, to uh, he seems to be willing to let nuclear, there be a nuclear Iran. Well, I also want to talk a little bit about the uh, Israeli-Palestinian peace track. Uh, and I don't have an article about that uh, prepared here, but I do want to just comment that there's a rising recognition of the fact that uh, it's a, a little bit silly to be attacking or to be talking about uh, the Israeli-Palestinian peace when there are so many nations with much worse problems that the president is not get spending any time on at all. It seems to be disproportionate uh, trying to, to force feed uh, Israel with uh, a false peace. Um, and there's an article on uh, Israel Today magazine uh, which says Palestinians prefer to live in quote racist quote unquote Israel uh, people call Israel racist. Of course, it's the freest, least racist of any of the Muslim Middle East nations. And uh, there's actually a growing number of Palestinians, of uh, Arabs living in Israel and in, in the Palestinian territories, uh, actually openly saying they prefer to live in Israel. They don't want to live in a Palestinian state. And uh, so you, you, it makes you ask the question, why, why are they working so hard trying to do this, if that's the case? Uh, there's another good article in uh, Israel Today. That, uh, the headline is, Time to Upgrade the Status of Christian Arabs, says Israeli MK, uh, Minister Knesset. Uh, and this article is about the fact that uh, there's a growing uh, sentiment among the Christians in the Palestinian territories and in Israel that uh, they'd like to be known as Christians, and many of them are claiming their, uh, their heritage actually predates the Arabs coming into the Holy Land, that the Christians were there first and were not even of the same ethnic background as Arabs, and that they'd like to be recognized as citizens of Israel and be part of Israel and even serve in the army and so forth. Uh, so that's, a, I mentioned a little bit about that before, but that's a great, great development. Uh, Jerusalem Post has a, a deeper, a more developed article on that called The End of the Himitude. And uh, if you remember Dehimis or Dehimitude in Islam is that says that um, Muslims are full citizens in their countries, but uh, Christians and Jews are second class citizens. Literally, they have more taxes, they have less freedoms and so forth. But this article says it's the end of Dehimitude. Uh, and that's because of this idea that Christians are beginning to move towards Israel's side of the fence away from Islam. And of course, that's happening in Israel itself, as I've documented, but it's also an issue in many of the Muslim countries where the persecution of Christians is uh, becoming a virtual genocide, where they're beginning to just kill Christians because they're Christians. They either have to force uh, convert to Islam or be killed. And, uh, and that's happening particularly in places like Egypt and Syria with many documented cases of that. But Christians are being persecuted all over the Middle East except in Israel. <laughs> uh, now, uh, continuing on talking about the peace process, uh, 
One of the things that Prime Minister Netanyahu announced this week is that he plans a national referendum on U.S. peace framework uh, to extend negotiations for another year. Basically what he's saying is if they want to keep going on trying to push this peace thing, uh, he wants Israel to actually have a national referendum. This would be unprecedented. They haven't done that before. But in other words, the people would actually get to vote whether or not they want to continue with the peace process. And I know that the U.S., uh, in pressuring for this, is convinced that the people would vote for the peace process. Uh, I kind of would suggest and almost, I'd be willing to predict that if it really comes down to a referendum, the people could very easily uh, vote against continuing it because the sentiment in Israel is, is moving rapidly towards the side of recognizing they cannot have a peace agreement with the Palestinians because of the demands of the Palestinians that are just uh, ridiculous and uh, off the wall. Um, another article in Israel Today magazine uh, mentions that uh, Jerusalem is the next stumbling block to peace. And of course, we understand that uh, be, to be the case. Uh, the Bible actually says that Jerusalem will become a heavy stone uh, that anyone who tries to lift it will hurt themselves. And uh, it's a good article uh, talking about that. That, and and then subsequent news reports in the few days since then. Uh, this was first put up uh, last Tuesday. Uh, even since then, there have been reports from the Palestinians saying that they'll never give up Jerusalem and so forth. So that's definitely uh, the Bible is true. It's going to be the the major stumbling block ultimately. Uh, I've mentioned before this uh, this Arab. Uh, member of the Knesset, uh, TB, T TB, who says uh, in a new statement, he says, uh, I'll fight this, quote, strange idea, unquote, of a Jewish state. Uh, and uh, he's still uh, unwilling to acknowledge that Israel should be a Jewish state. He wants it to be a multinational state. He wants to have Palestine as a state where no Jews are allowed, but he demands that Israel be a state where not only are Arabs allowed, but with the right of return of 5 million Arabs, they would actually have the majority. And so he's unwilling to uh, accept the, the definition of Israel being a Jewish state. And of course, that was the original purpose in 1917 in the Balfour Declaration, a, a Jewish homeland, a homeland for the Jews. So uh, he's fighting uh, uphill against, uh, well, certainly against God's purposes in that. Um, then let's talk a little bit about what's going on on the ground in Israel right now. There's uh, one incident that happened this week is that uh, an Arab mob abducted and beat uh, dozens of Jews in one particular village. Uh, it had uh, some Jews uh, were uh, going into an Arab village uh, and they were probably provocative in their going in there. Probably it was a mistake to do it, but they ended up being kidnapped, captured, uh, tied up, and uh, their legs, uh, hands and legs were tied up and they were beaten. And uh, that's created quite a stir on both sides of the mark. They were actually, their lives were saved. Those who had captured them were going to, some of them said they want to kill them, but the actually elders in the Arab village actually protected them and, and arranged for, negotiated their release uh, back to Israel. Uh, but that, there's more and more provocations happening uh, every day now in Israel as it appears that we're building up to a new intifada or, or uprising among uh, the Palestinians. And kind of the final straw or the trigger uh, could be the breakdown of the peace talks. Uh, that's one reason uh, I think Netanyahu is, is kind of trying to keep at least the, the semblance of some kind of talking going uh, to avoid that provocation. Uh, another story in Debkafile, uh, heavily armed militias wrest control of West Bank Palestinian refugee camps from the Palestinian Authority. And not only uh, is there uprisings and things beginning to happen and attacks against Israelis, but uh, even in, in the Palestinian controlled areas under the Palestinian police, the police are losing control and militias, uh, radical militias, are, have taken over, according to this report, um, that there are now 19 West Bank refugee sites veering out of the control of the Palestinian Authority and its security services. Uh, the close to a quarter of a million Palestinians living in those camps have fallen into the hands of local armed militias run by terrorist organizations, crime mobs, and arms racketeers. So that's a very ominous development as well. Uh, 
Another case going on this week, uh, some Palestinians uh, who were being accused of collaborators with Israel fled from their Arab town to an Israeli settlement for safety. Uh, that's quite a remarkable report uh, that uh, some Arabs actually feel safer in uh, Israel or an Israeli town, even in the West Bank. Uh, well, uh, senior Israeli diplomatic officials, here's a report about the peace process in the uh, uh, Israel Hayom uh, newspaper in Israel. Uh, Kerry's plan for the Jordan Valley withdrawal is ridiculous. That's the uh, is senior Israeli diplomats uh, saying that the U.S. proposals are superficial and are not serious. Kerry is not in touch with the reality. Um, and uh, that's that's the uh, that's kind of the buzz under undercurrent <laughs> that the diplomats are actually beginning to ridicule John Kerry's ideas, and they consider him totally out of touch and unrealistic. Uh, in the meantime, while Kerry was there last weekend, uh, Israel announced and approved 1,400 new housing units uh, over the Green Line and around Jerusalem and in the West Bank or in Judea and Samaria. And I, re I celebrate and rejoice with that announcement. Um, and then as the Palestinian negotiator uh, Saeed Erekat fumes, Israel National News reports, a poll shows Israelis reject further concessions. Um, he reacts, Erica is reacting to Israel's construction plans, and uh, polls show that Israelis reject further withdrawals and they doubt peace talks. That's one reason I think a referendum would be defeated uh, to agree to continue the negotiations. Well, there's some good news as well. Uh, David's castle to be unveiled on, quote, Palestinian land. Um, Israel Today magazine says we reported last year on the discovery of an ancient biblical era palace probably dating back to the time of King David himself, uh, that was covered up for political reasons. Uh, the group uh, that discovered is now telling Israel National News that they will publicly reveal the location of the Barrow Palace next Friday, uh, this coming Friday, January 17th, an event that is likely to cause a diplomatic earthquake. So we want to kind of look for that this week in the news. But uh, it's pretty cool that they found uh, well, it's actually intact. It was kind of buried underground. Uh, but it's, a lot of it is intact, an actual palace from the time of King David. That's wonderful. Also this week they discovered a biblical water tunnel uh, in eastern Jerusalem, a 2,500-year-old underground corridor believed to have served a Judean king. That would take it way back uh, almost to the time of, uh, of return from Babylon and the captivity. Uh, pretty interesting. And then just a couple more things. Uh, there's a survey in Egypt, or actually in, in Arab, seven Arab countries, a survey was undertaken. And the conclusion is, in uh, Israel National News, that uh, Egypt is overtaking Saudi Arabia as the most conservative country. Um, the revealing statistic is in Saudi Arabia, um, two out of three uh, think that women should cover all but their eyes in public. Uh, and 50% say women should, uh, women should be able to choose how they dress. But in Egypt, uh, the statistics are different. Uh, it's actually worse than Saudi Arabia. In Egypt, it says that only 14% there said women should choose their dress. That the rest believe women should be made to cover up instead of 50% in Saudi Arabia. So that's interesting. And then there's a report here in, from Canada. Uh, in Canada, a Winnipeg provincial court judge recently ruled that a 2011 altercation at a local high school in which a student uh, lit on fire uh, a 15-year-old Jewish student's hair with a lighter while saying, let's burn the Jew. But this Winnipeg judge, judge says that was not a hate crime. Hello? What in the world's with going on with that? Well, um, one final thing I want to mention is that the uh, there's an article in, about local uh, or U.S. news uh, wait until you see just how many regulations were passed in 2013. The executive branch imposes its will. This is an article in The Blaze. Uh, and would you believe that uh, in 2013, the federal agencies, not, this, not the Congress, but just legislative, I mean, uh, regulatory agencies, the executive branch, issued 3,659 rules in 2013. 
compared to Congress, which passed 65 laws signed by President Obama. So that's a major problem with the with the trends in our in our uh, in our country. We need to pray for our own country as we pray for Israel. Well, let's let's do pray and thank you for being with me today, Heavenly Father. We just pray for your oversight, not only your oversight, but Father, we know your hand is on uh, the affairs of the world, and you have a, a revealed plan. You've you've spelled it out over several thousand years of your purpose to to bless Israel, to make Israel a blessing to the nations. And you've also said those who bless Israel will be blessed, but those who curse Israel will be cursed. We see your hand of blessing and of judgment, Lord, and your word being true to every uh, degree. And we thank you and we honor you for that. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem and for the rains to come during this rainy season. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Uh, come back and see us. Shalom, shalom.